from hidden cameras to your cell phone records to drones. Big Brother is watching you. Coming up, it's all about 1984 at DC Public Library. Washington Full Circle starts right now. Welcome to Washington Full Circle. I'm Cecily Fernandez, joined by my co-host, Lindsay Washington. George Orwell's classic novel, 1984, is a subject of a series of events at the DC Public Library entitled Orwellian America, Government Transparency and Personal Privacy in the Digital Age. Here to tell us about it is Catherine Gies from the DC Public Library. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This topic, 1984, is such a relevant book today, still. Yes. Um, tell me about this program. Well, we were really excited to do this program because as you said, it, it is incredibly relevant. Everything that's been happening the, in the past couple of years with Edward Snowden and the NSA leaks. Surveillance, surveillance tapes. Yes. And we wanted to develop a series of programs that would really explore these topics and make make the information that people are most concerned about more accessible to people because surveillance is, it's everywhere, it, it really is. And people, people often talk about 1984 or talk about Big Brother without even realizing that it comes from George Orwell's novel. So we tried to design a, a series of programs that would explore ways that government a information can be accessed online from, from people's own homes. They might not even realize that it's accessible, but it's out there. and. We, we've partnered with different organizations who will be able to show people how to, how to access that information. What has the response been so far to something kind of as big as this, but it can be pretty groundbreaking? The response has been amazing. It's been really, really fantastic. We've had people from all over the world contact us saying how excited they are to hear that we're doing this type of program and making it available to the public and even more so how happy they are that it's a public library that's doing it. Yeah. Libraries have always been concerned with um, the, an individual's right to privacy, so it seemed really natural that we do something like this here. Yeah. And I know that, I mean, you're doing so many different things, lots of different events, and I, I think most of them are free. All of them are All free. All of them are free, All even better. Free. Yes. Um, and one of the things you guys did mm. that I thought was so neat is you actually read the entire book. Yes, we did, we read the entire book from from out loud, start to finish, I should say. <laughs> yes, out loud, from start to finish in the Great Hall at the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library. We started at 10 in the morning and we ended, I think we ended at about 8.30. Wow. It was a very long day. But we had people, we had, our youngest reader was 14. Um, we had someone come down from New York especially to do this and I didn't even realize until he had finished reading and had asked me how to get back to Union Station. Um, so it's just been really, really wonderful to see everyone who's come. We also had some special guests um, and phenomenal, phenomenal readers. Everyone just did a great job. And I know that there are a lot of topics within um, this big subject matter mm -hmm. and, and one of them is, is that you guys featured was about um, safety directed at teens. And, yes. and I always think now, Lindsay is a different generation. I'm always so grateful <laughs> that I did not, uh, that I was not a young person with <laughs> access to social media. I mean, I think this is such a huge topic for um, teens today. Yeah. Um, and, and I know you're, you know, you're very involved in social media, but um, you, don't you think that's important for young people? Well, no, you know? definitely. I think it's one thing where I, you know, I see a lot of, you know, I used to, before the internet became big, and I, I think a lot of kids even now who don't maybe have internet access in their homes will go to the library to use the internet. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a big thing where you know you get a public library who's doing something like you know promoting something about internet yes. privacy, where uh, but a lot of people go to the library to use the internet and to do personal business on the internet. Mm -hmm. But you you never know you know kind of what's happening. So there's always those the concerns about you know making sure you close a website down that uh, might have your personal information on it and when you you see those boxes like is this a personal is this a public website or is this a public computer you're mm -hmm. never sure exactly what you're doing and i'm sure that this is something the library kind of has an ongoing um, dialogue about with with um, teens and, mm -hmm. and adults yes yeah. we do um, and as a matter of fact we're doing a teen program that for it, a teen program <laughs> that will explore 
It'll teach teens how to protect their information online. We have someone coming from the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu in mm -hmm. Virginia, and they they really teach people how to uh, teach people how to empower themselves by learning more about how they can protect themselves online, and just different steps that very easy, simple, basic steps that you can take to protect yourself. Now we don't have that much time. I do mm -hmm. want to um, I, I do want you to talk just briefly about your big event is at the museum. Yes, um, we're going to have Vince Houghton from the Spy International Spy Museum come to speak, and also Jean Polisinski from the First Amendment Center, and it'll be a discussion about the balance between national security and government and transparency and it will be streamed before a live audience in the museum's night studio. But in general, I mean, aside from the Orwellian project, mm -hmm. which is so many great free things and people really should look at that, also ongoing, so many fabulous activities. Yes. And I just want to say, you do have pajama parties, which I love. <laughs> and do. Uh, yeah. you do have, you do bring, you know, dogs in to read with the kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just, I mean, so much. Do you remember from your childhood doing Well, I stuff? used to, I mean, we, yeah, my parents used to be like, we're going to the library and I would go and just read books. You get a beanbag chair and you yeah. sit and you read and it was amazing. But now they're providing the snacks. That's yes. A, well, yes. You know, so yes. <laughs> parties, you get to go and you get to eat. I mean, we, I <laughs> never knew you could eat in the library before and so now that the fact that the, you provide snacks to kids is pretty awesome. Only during special only, times, yeah. right? Yeah, only during special events. So, right. la so lastly, tell us, I mean, so much going on. What should uh, viewers do who want to know what's going on? Well, coming up for Black History Month, we have a really special event on February 2nd. It'll also take place in the Great Hall. Um, it'll be, we have Holly Bass, I believe her name is. She is the artist who just did the exhibition that's currently there now, Black Space, and sh they, uh, her and a number of other artists will be presenting um, for Black History Month. That sounds so. wonderful. Lots of great activities. Check out the website. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, we've got all the district's hot real estate trends coming up. Washington Full Circle will be right back. Washington, D.C. has always been one of the hottest real estate markets in the country. And here to tell us about the latest housing trends is Jay Nix, realtor with the Mandy and David team. Jay, thanks so much for being here. Hi, Cecily. Thanks for having me. Just in general, is this a good time to buy? It's a great time to buy right now. In fact, anytime you buy real estate, it's a great time to buy because it's a great way to invest your money. But right now, especially interest rates are low. So as the financial people will tell you, it's cheap to borrow money right now. Um, we have a lot of buyers coming in who are ready to get out of the rental market and invest their money. And one thing to consider is, um, you know, if if, uh, if you don't if you're ready to buy a home now, you should go ahead and talk to a lender and talk to your real estate agent because if, the longer you wait, you could see interest rates go back up. So a home that costs four hundred thousand dollars today could cost you more money if you wait a year if rates go up because you'll be paying more in the long term for that same property because of the higher rate. Right. DC seems like it's a pretty transitional city though. So I mean, is it better if you think you're going to be here for a longer period of time to buy or does it make more sense to just buy because you know you've got something you can create equity from it and then rent it out later on or is it more because, you know. Well, that's a good that's a good question. You know, if you're buying a condo, you might want to consider the rental restrictions on that condo. Right. But and also for tax reasons, you really need to stay in that home for 2 years before you try to sell it. So for the long-term investment, yes, it's a good thing. So if you're going to either live there for a long time or rent it out eventually, it is a good investment. Okay. And you know, DC, I mean, there's so much going on in this city and we've seen so many neighborhoods go through uh, major transformations, but when you look around the city and you take your, your clients around the city, what are some of the up and coming neighborhoods? Well, there's so many neighborhoods. I mean, it, it, I've been here almost 20 years and I've seen so much change, but I would say one of my favorites right now is Petworth. Um, it, it, you've got the new grocery store over there. You've got access to the metro. And also if you work downtown, you, you're pretty close to downtown. Um, Brookland is another neighborhood. You've got access to the Red Line. The mm -hmm. Monroe Street Market just opened. Right. Uh, a lot of good housing stock over there. But there are several neighborhoods to look at. I know you just bought in the southwest corner, yeah. you know, the, the new construction happening down there. It's a great area to look in. Truxton Circle, Eckington, Hill East, even Anacostia. Good housing stock in those areas, and, and buyers have their eyes on it, and, and we should see a lot more purchases happening in those areas. So is it more of a buyer's market or a seller's market? I would say it's still mostly a seller's market, but that really depends on the neighborhood, you know, right. and depends on the property. If you're in Logan, DuPont, Shaw, 
any of the hot neighborhoods, then you're st we're still seeing multiple offers and prices escalating over the list price. The other day at 6 and R in Shaw, we saw a condo uh, that got 14 offers and oh, went wow. over that's, asking that's price. That's scary. <laughs> that's scary. Well, it, it, and it, it's become I mean, the norm in DC. If you're a buyer, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, but good deal for the seller. But you know, if you're a savvy buyer, do your research and look in those up and coming, quote unquote, up and coming neighborhoods because you can probably get a home for list price or below list price depending on the situation. Right. Another thing to consider is new construction. So right. it's set at a market rate. There's a rate. lot of that. I mean, it's, it feels like there's a ton of new construction in the city. A lot of new construction. And if you get in, get in on it early, you can buy it at a certain price and not have to compete. That's the main thing. You don't want to compete with other buyers. And because of the shortage of inventory, with this new construction, we see a lot of things delivering the spring, summer, and fall, so that should help the situation some. Now, would you say that is the, if there is, what is the hot trend in the district? Would you say it's it's new construction and all the new condos? Would that be one of the major new trends is getting in early, having the opportunity to get in on the ground floor of one of these new developments? I think it depends on the buyer. You know, if a buyer is looking for something turnkey, they want to find that new construction and get it before it's finished. One thing you have to consider is that it may not be ready for three or four months, so right. you might have to wait before you can move in. The other trend still is, you know, trying to find that fixer upper, which, you know, can be a challenge. You know, they're, right. they're, they're getting <laughs> fewer and far between to find those. And, you know, one thing about a fixer upper, a fixer upper in DuPont, Logan Shaw can cost as much as a finished home in Petworth right. or Brookland or over in Anacostia. Yeah, I know. Right. I remember in my house search, I found this great place in Adams Morgan, but it was tiny for, you know, almost the same amount of money that I spent in Southwest. And Southwest was relatively new construction because they had just renovated the entire building that I that I just bought in. So, um, so it was really great to kind of see that price difference and, and figure so out exactly yeah, and what those you're and you, you just went through through this um, right. fairly recently. But what would you say are some of the the biggest mistakes first time home homeowners make? There are countless number of mistakes that people <laughs> can make. But I would say, you know, one thing I see uh, people do is they don't budget, they don't plan for, you know, they, they see, you know, what they need to for pay for closing costs, what it's going to cost them initially. They don't think long term, you know, making that monthly uh, mortgage in, you know, payment. And also, you know, if you've been a renter all your life and all of a sudden you've got the responsibility of maintaining that home, you can't call the landlord to fix something. If something <laughs> breaks in the middle of the night, it's your responsibility and you got to have money to pay for it. Yeah, right. yeah, I think we've all learned that the, the hard way. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's it is hard to budget for that. I mean, once you get into that house, and of course, I think that you have to go through the process of like, oh, we need a water heater, new water heater, or yeah. you know, the roof needs to be repaired. I mean, you you know, there's going to be something. Right. But to avoid mistakes on the front end, find a good agent. They'll help you walk you through the process to help avoid those big mistakes on the front end. And as long as you do your homework about how much you can afford, then you should be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think pre I, I got pre-approved for a certain amount, and I knew like this is how much I can afford. This is what I can pay. And my parents made it very clear to me. They're like, you're going for a condo because then you've got a management team that will help you with some of the bigger things. Right. And they'll you know if you need you know something major break. That'll be in your, you know, rental contract that you can, you know, they'll help you fix, you know, your disposal breaks or something like that. Right. But mm -hmm. for everything else, you know, it's all community based and you're paying a condo fee every month to make sure stuff like that doesn't right. happen. Right. And that's the um, nice thing about a condo. The main structural issues uh, will be taken care of by the condo. Right. Most exactly. Of the time. And then you get condo insurance in case something else happens that kind mm -hmm. of affects anything else that happens around the condo, which is nice too. So, so for viewers who are, are watching and, and, and might be thinking about buying, um, what, what advice would you give them as far as whether or not they're ready to buy? Well, or they can afford to buy. <laughs> well, th there's several answers to that question. One thing you people say, I can't afford to buy anything. Well, if you uh, look you know, online, you can find something called DC Opens Doors, which is uh, a great program for first-time buyers or even um, any buyer, actually. But they will help you with the down payment with some restrictions, and they will also help you uh, you know, with the mortgage par part of it, but there are some limits to how much money you can borrow. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way to get into the, into the you know, to buy a home. There's also the DC Inclusionary Zone Program, which mm -hmm. uh, for buyers, uh, they have to take a housing course, they have to apply with the city, and they get access to below market value homes, but they Ooh. have to qualify for that. Nice. And yeah, so they should talk to an agent, do the research and see if it's something that's the right fit for them. Thank you for all the fabulous information. Sure. <laughs> Glad to do it, thanks for having me. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Okay. You're up. Okay. Do you dream of joining A-listers at a fabulous Oscar night party? We're going to help you make it happen when Washington Full Circle returns.
We might not be in Hollywood, but that doesn't mean we can't throw an A-list party. Lindsay, you always throw fabulous Oscar night parties. Tell us what you have planned for this year's Academy Awards. <laughs> well, I like to, I really like to decorate. So I tend to go a little crazy at Party City and I'll go and I'll buy just a lot of props. So I, I you know, some of the stuff you They're see around They're sprinkled around. Right. But it's great that, I mean, right now, I mean, uh, there are so many party favors that are specifically for Oscar night. Right, and they do. And they, it's it's a lot. You can get like great glasses, goblets, stuff, you know, to put drinks in and things like that. And they also have a lot of cocktails you can make based on the movies that come out and everything like that. So it's, do you it's, have an you know, example of, of any? I can't imagine. A, what would be an example? of a so, cocktail based on see. a movie. Um, I know last year for um, for Wolf of Wall Street, since it was like New York based, they had something that was like like a city slicker. Okay. Uh, and things like that. Oh, that's um, a drink. Like as the drink okay. or like a, a That's a lot of work. An old I think you can stick with champagne for that. Right, yeah. and you can stick with champagne too, which is, you know, just a good, you know, time to have. So it, it, that's not an issue at all. But um, a lot of times, if you want to go above and beyond and do that, and that's why you know you can do the little the little glasses because that's fun and you you don't have to waste as much alcohol. And, and also because you know Academy Award night, I mean it's a long. It's three hours. So yeah. it's a lot of so, it's you a know, lot of you, time. You, you want to pace yourself a little bit. So right. I think the smaller glasses are probably <laughs> a good idea. Good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But you also have the thing where you can play games. You can do drinking games and do. Bingo tell us about and some of like the that. games that you plan to do. Well, I have I do Oscar bingo. I okay, try to do trivia night. Yeah. Yeah, we probably can't get. Out of this, but this it's is okay, cute. But I, so you can do as you're playing along as the show's going on. As the on. show's going on, yeah, you do bingo. And sometimes if it's, there's commercial break or while the red carpet's going on, I try to do Oscar trivia. Uh -huh. So I'll make like a trivia thing on the TV for people to play. And a um, lot of this stuff you can just get online. Yeah, you, you get online. Um, I make nominee guides for people so that people know who are not nominated. I make a ballot every year so that people have ballots. Now, do you give a prize? Out. Do you have people? I, okay. I do. I like to buy like either movie posters or DVDs, or I like to buy some something based on whatever comes out that year, something kind of important or popular that, that people would really enjoy. And, and that's what I'll give to the person that actually either predicts the most winners or um, gets the most things right, ultimately. Now, be honest now, uh, you know, you're you know, very much a movie buff <laughs> and uh, you love Hollywood and you know everything about every movie. And But you know, as far as your friends, um, do they start to lose interest after? I mean, I guess that's where the games come in handy because it is such yeah. a long show. So sometimes, and sometimes, and sometimes it's also hard to get them out because it's a Sunday night, and so a lot of people yeah. have to work Monday morning. So I do. I try to entice them with like food and, <laughs> and games and drinking and everything like that. But it is it is a little hard. So you do try to be like come, and th sometimes they don't stay. So you know, you, I'm like come, and if you stay, you get a prize. Right. So and is, for people who nice. are, I think it's good to throw in a few questions for people who aren't quite so much movie buffs. You can do like, who's most likely to have a, a wardrobe malfunction? Right, right, who's, right. who's most who's, likely to give a terrible acceptance speech? Right. You who's know, most likely to cry when they're thanking <laughs> their dog or when they're thanking their parakeet or their, you know, their or best forgetting friend. forgetting to thank their husband. Right, you know? or they're forgetting <laughs> to thank their, you know, their, their significant other or their kids or something like that. Exactly. So, okay. no, that's that's definitely a big part of it. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot okay. because um, because you are a resident movie buff. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to it. Okay. okay. So this year's Oscars, yes. the nominees for best movie are? Nominees for best picture, there are eight of them this year. So we've got Whiplash, we've got um, Birdman, we've got American Sniper, we have uh, The Imitation Game, Selma, um, and The Theory of Everything. Okay. So. so and boyhood, those, sorry. And boyhood, and yes. that's important. So that out is of the those big one. movies, give me your prediction, which movie will win the Oscar? Boyhood. Boyhood, I'm okay. Predicting boyhood. What's the upset movie that could win? Upset movie is either The Imitation Game or A Birdman. Okay. And now the votes have already been cast, right? They've already well, yeah, no, they're they're voting now. They're voting they, now. The nominations were already cast. So how do you think do you think that the the little bit of controversy we've seen over Selma not being nominated for more awards, do you think that could impact the voting for best movie? It could, and that that could be the dark horse that kind of comes in behind everything and like wins it all, but I really I I still think Boyhood is kind of the, okay. the academy Boyhood darling. for best movie. Okay. Boyhood best movie. Best yes. actor. Let's let's Best actor. We've got Steve Carell Foxcatcher, Bradley Cooper for American Sniper, Benedict Cumberbatch for The Imitation Game, Michael Keaton for Birdman, and Eddie Redmayne for The Theory of Everything. Okay, now my pick for most handsome actor is Bradley Cooper, but they don't have a category for that. So, right. so who's going to win <laughs> Best Actor? Best Actor, I think it's 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 either a toss up, but I think well, I think Michael Keaton to be okay, completely for honest for Birdman. Um, but a lot of people think that Eddie Redmayne should get it as Stephen Hawking in The Theory of Everything. I personally, I, I just think 
Michael Keaton's portrayal was just pretty flawless and okay. you can't really tell if he's acting or not so okay. I think that was and really who would good. be the upset that everybody would be like oh my gosh I never expected that uh, upset would be Steve Carell for Foxcatcher okay. okay I, I would think love a lot to of see him get were, that yeah. yeah I think that would be the total kind of crazy like what where did that come from um so and best actress nominees we've got Marion Cotillard for two days one night Felicity Jones for the theory of everything Julianne Moore for still Alice Rosamund Pike for Gone Girl and Weiss Witherspoon for Wild okay and I let you pronounce Marion Cotillard is that Marianne it? Cotillard. Cotillard okay Cotillard. now French actress yes French uh, actress. very well known um, in France maybe not quite as she did didn't she already she's won, won. An Oscar okay before. she's won an Oscar mm -hmm. she's not gonna win not Again, really no. I think two days one night is very I, I haven't heard of it really this season. I didn't know about it. I was unfamiliar with it. So yeah, so that's kind she's of under the, dark the radar. Horse, but you know, she's the dark horse. Okay. I didn't even know she was up for a nomination. So that could be a, an upset if if she does win. Best actress. Who's Best actress get it? is Julianne Moore for Still Alice. I okay. think it's. Uh, she's kind of. Really, she seems like a shoe in. She won the Golden Globe, so I think that's, that's gonna, always a good indicator. I think indicator. that's a good indicator. Um, but Reese Witherspoon might also kind of. She would be the upset. Take it. Yeah. Okay. Last so. question and the most important, am I invited to this Oscar of night course. party? Of course, yes. That's all yeah, we need to definitely. know. That's it for now. Thanks to all our guests and my fabulous co-host, Lindsay Washington. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'm Cecily Fernandez. We'll see you next time.